Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today in the Reducing Plastic Waste and Moving uh, Beyond a Throwaway Culture webinar. I'm Paz Artaza Regan, Program Manager at Catholic Climate Covenant. Uh, before we're going to get started, uh, I would invite you to uh, join me in a prayer. Uh, let us quiet our hearts and remember we're always in the presence of God. This prayer is adapted from Catholic Climate's Covenant uh, 2018 Earth Day program. Morning has broken, inviting a creation longing to be healed and be praised. We gather to greet the new day by praising God. We are created for relationships with God, with one another, and with the earth. We honor those relationships today and every day. We seek to care for our common home, the earth, to heal rather than wound, to treasure rather than discard. We see that all creation is connected and in need of healing. Let us commit to new ways of honoring God's creation as a means of sharing Jesus' transforming love. And let us seek God's grace, justice, and mercy for all. Some housekeeping items before we get started. The video is being recorded and we will be sending a link to those that registered uh, and anybody who's on the webinar today. There will be a Q&A session after both presentations. You may submit your questions by writing them in the questions box on the right-hand panel of your screen. In the control panel, there is a drop-down menu with questions on it. You may wish to indicate to whom the question is directed to when you submit your question. I also would like to tell you that my colleague Caroline, Carolyn Thiele will be monitoring uh, the questions box and answering some of your questions directly if needed. If you have audio uh, issues, it may be due to your Wi-Fi connection. You can choose uh, to go by telephone by dialing the phone number that is given to you there in the section uh, if you go by phone call. Go to webinar gives you that uh, option. Uh, just click on the audio tab in the box. We are delighted to be joined today by Valeria Merino, Vice President for Global Earth Day at the Earth Day Network. I will be introducing her and reading her bio in a few minutes uh, when she will be speaking to us about Earth Day and this year's End Plastic Pollution uh, campaign. As many of you know, April 22nd, um, 2018, will mark the 48th anniversary of Earth Day. And it's a secular celebration, but many faith communities have incorporated Earth Day into their annual calendars to build awareness and action. Since 2016, Catholic Climate Covenant has created a program that complements the Earth Day Network's annual Earth Day theme. This year's 2018 Earth Day program, Beyond a Throwaway Culture, Reduced Waste, Grow Community, uh, focuses on how our overuse of single-use disposable plastic contributes to what Pope Francis calls the throwaway culture, and how from contributing to land and marine pollution to increasing our use of carbon-producing fuels, Single-use plastic have a devastating impact on God's creation. Very briefly, let us look at how Pope Francis has used the term throwaway culture. Pope Francis connects many issues under the umbrella term throwaway culture. In fact, he has said that every conflict, be it war, environmental degradation, poverty, racism, are emblematic of this throwaway culture. In January 2015, during the annual papal address to ambassadors at the Holy See, he decried throwaway culture, uh, saying that it spares nothing and no one, not nature, not human beings, not even God him at all. During the general audience, he also said, we're often guided by the arrogance of domination possession, manipulation, exploitation. 
we are losing this attitude of wonder, of contemplation, of listening to creation. Home, that we, what rules today is not man, it is money and the economy and financial system lacking in ethics. The men and women are sacrificed to the idols of money and consumption. Homeless people freeze to death on the street. And yet when the Dow drops 10 points, in some countries, it is considered a tragedy. That is how people are thrown away. We, people, are thrown away as if we were trash. Human life, the person, no longer felt to be primary, no, not valued or respected or protected, especially if they are poor or disabled, if they are not yet useful like an unborn child or are no longer useful like an older person. Today's throwaway culture is reflected in frequent waste of food, food that has, is thrown might be as well have been stolen from the table of the poor or the hungry. In his 2015 encyclical, Laudato Si, the Pope spent the entire first chapter discussing how our throwaway culture impacts us. The Pope has asks us to consider the dangers of environmental pollutants, toxins, garbage, throwaway culture mindset of the world. By pointing out the effects of the throwaway culture, Pope Francis wants us to think how environmental damage uh, is looked at in the world, how we can act upon it both as individuals and as communities. He asks us to work to adopt what he calls a circular model of production, a model where consumption, efficiency, reuse, and recycling are all considered uh, part of our uh, way of counteracting the destructive throwaway culture. It is within this context that the Covenant produced this year's Earth Day program as a complement to the Earth Day network. We are thankful today to have Valeria Merino join us. She's going to inform us on why the Earth Day network chose to focus on plastic pollution this year and give us details of the wonderful resources available to help us tackle the issue. Valeria, is Vice President for Global Earth Day, where she developed collaborative strategies and actions to further build Earth Day Network into the platform that unites the voices of citizens and institutions around the globe. She's an environmental lawyer by training and a social entrepreneur. She has worked in many different areas of social change, uh, developing uh, multidisciplinary approaches to resolving social issues. Uh, Valeria, uh, would you like to start? Absolutely. I, I wanted to say first, thank you to the Catholic Climate Covenant for having me today and, and pass for us during this process, even like five minutes before the webinar. Um, I figured out that I had a couple of things that were not correct, so she helped me to put them back together for your presentation today. And thank you to all, everyone joining. Um, we're delighted to see there is um, a very large group of people uh, connected to the webinar. And, and let me just start very quickly by saying, um, yes, you know, Earth Day Network has picked uh, end plastic pollution as the theme for the Earth Day of 2018, April the 22nd. And this is going to be a um, several years program, but it's going to be the lion's share of our effort this year is going to be on ending plastic pollution. And if you can, past the slide, let me talk a little bit about Earth Day in case that you are not familiar with this um, celebration. If you put the next slide. Uh, the first Earth Day was April the 22nd, 1970, and it was recognized as the birth of the modern environmental movement. And I think what I wanted to mean with this is that before this day, um, most people talk about environment and, and thought about national parks reserves that have been you know set aside for the enjoyment of everybody but really in 1970s when the connection between health and well-being and environment is is really put at the front center conversation 
And here are some photos about the gatherings in 1970 that led to the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency and the Clean Water Act and the Clean Air Act and a lot of other legislation related to conservation. And, and you should know that in 2020 is going to be the 50th anniversary and we're already looking forward to do a lot of very interesting things there. Can we pass the slide? Our goal really with picking this theme for Earth Day was to make Earth Day 2018 a pivotal moment that changes the human attitude and behavior concerning plastics and catalyzes action because we want to reduce plastic pollution. And we pick this subject because is first of all, uh, we uh, poll our network and ask, you know, which are the topics that we should focus towards 2020? And they pick uh, plastic pollution, one of the five top issues. And if you can pass the slide, um, you probably are not familiar with some of the facts related to plastic pollution, but there have been 8.3 billion metric tons of non-recycled plastic produced, which has led to 6.3, uh, you can go to the previous slide, please. Uh, the previous slide, the previous slide, yeah, you passed it way too soon. Okay, uh, of plastic waste. This is an enormous amount of waste. And so when people think that, you know, plastics are not a problem because they have recycled, no, they are not. Only 9% of the waste uh, related to plastics has been recycled. 12% has been incinerated to create energy. Everything else either has gone to a landfill or has ended up in the la landscape, you know, in the natural environment, either in land or in water, sweet water bodies, or in the ocean. In man marine life, commonly mistakes plastic for food, so we're starting to have an enormous amount of fish that we eat or crustaceans um, with plastic in their bodies. Can we pass to the next slide, please? But plastic pollution has other reasons why it's very um, concerning to all of us. It has a big relationship with climate change. So one of the things is that we all thought maybe is that because, you know, uh, clean energy is picking up and is becoming more important, you know, the oil industry was going to have eventually to produce less oil and leave it on the ground because they are not going to be able to produce gas at the same speed that they have been producing it in the past. Well, not really. They are looking for a new industry to use the oil and they are producing more oil today than more speed than ever before. And it's because most plastic is not, you know, 100% of plastic is produced of oil. Very few little portions of plastic are produced with um, other products, like, you know, um, and they are they biodegradable, like uh, corn. But the majority, the lion's share of the plastic production comes from oil. The second thing is that the oil industry, the plastic industry are, are, are intended to raise the production of plastic by 2050 by 400%. It says 20% dead, but that's the production of oil. But the production of plastics is going to be quadruple. So you can imagine what it is. And plastics carry a lot of other chemicals, which make them very bad for your health in some cases. Let's, let's keep moving on in the presentation. Thank you. To the next slide. And there is this other aspect of plastic pollution, which has a direct relationship with social justice. You know, generally the poorest of the poor are the more affected by waste. And a lot of the waste, you know, 15% or more or less of the waste is plastic. So 2 billion people in the world don't have their trash collected. In other words, you know, whatever trash they produce, they don't know what to do with. They, they have to do something with it. The majority of them, unfortunately, just pile it up close to the place where they live. And if they try to do something else, we'll be burning it, which is pretty bad for the environment or it would be just put it in a hole with everything mixed together, which eventually is going to create pollution of the water system around them. So there is here an aspect of plastic pollution that we have to have very clear in our minds. This affects a lot, a lot of poor people. Can we change this slide, please? So what is Earth Day trying to do? What we are saying to people and institutions is that this is a problem we have, we can do something about, in fact, personally, you know. 
And we had to take personal responsibility for our plastic pollution from how we contributed it. So we have created kind of a path of three steps, which we think is very easy for any person or even an institution to follow. First, you need to learn more about plastic pollution. And we have created a plastic pollution primer and toolkit. And you see in the slide, and you're going to receive these slides from the um, Catholic Climate Covenant, they're going to send this to you, has a live link in which you could just go to our website or Google this thing that's called Plastic Primer, Pollution Primer, and you'll find it. And it's a very comprehensive document that spells out all the different problems about plastics and gives you a lot of other resources that you can use in case you want to turn this into a presentation to somebody that you know. Whether you are doing it individually with your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, or you want to do it as an institution, this document gives you a lot of content that you can use. We are asking you to think as a person or as an institution the following. How much plastic do you consume in this cart? And this primer has a calculator. It's a very easy sheet of paper that allows you to really think about how much plastic of the different categories of plastic you consume every day or every week or every month and have a number of how much you consume a year. Also, it has a number of uh, sections in the, in the toolkit about the five R's that we have chosen, which are reduce, reuse, refuse, recycle, and remove. And reduce is kind of the core idea, which also aligns perfectly well with the theme that the um, Catholic Climate Covenant has chosen, because we think that unless we reduce consumption, everything else is minor. Was you have heard me say that only 10% of the plastics are ever recycled, you know, I'm not telling you not to recycle, but frankly, if you just recycle, you're not doing much. You should recycle for sure, but you should do something more than just recycling. I think the first thing is reduce. Think about it. You know, every time you have to buy something, you should ask yourself, do you really, do I really need this? Do, don't I have anything else in the house that I can use instead? Then you can reuse things. So you can choose to buy things that last more than one usage, like, you know, a bottle that you can carry around and just refill with water. And you can refuse. You can go to restaurants or eat out or whatever you do and say, please do not bring me in a straw. And say it just before the person even brings it to the table because once they give it to you, even if you don't use it, they have to throw it away. So in remove, of course, is about getting the plastic that is already in the environment. And you need to do that because that's not going to disappear. If you don't pick it up, if you don't help clean it up, it's going to stay there forever. Plastic does not biodegrade. It breaks into little pieces, and those little pieces end up flying away in, in, in the water, and eventually in fish, and even in the water that you're drinking. So we want to, you to think really carefully about these five things, and then create a little plan for yourself and how to reduce your plastic consumption in usage. And then you can engage others. You know, that's the third step. Once you know, you have learned, you have thought about it, you have act with yourself and your close members, family members and you know friends, then you can say, okay, how I expand my reach to others and then just engage others. And we have created a number of toolkits that you can use to do that. Organize for Earth Day is a toolkit that will help you think about different events that you can create on Earth Day The people, individual people can do. And register the event with us because we're giving visibility to those events so people can see how many things are happening on Earth Day. Also, you can organize a teaching. A teaching is a little gathering for people to learn about plastic pollution, but also organize themselves to do something about it. And there is a toolkit separate from the one that is called the plastic pollution primer that you can learn about how to do teachings. Finally, we're asking you to share your story with others. And this is not just about, you know, getting our hashtag and something that you're putting out there. It's not about that. It's because many people think that what they do individually is not going to count. And it does count. If you start thinking about the amount of plastic that you consume once you use a calculator, you'll see that if you reduce it, it's thousands and thousands of pieces of plastic between the bottles and the cups and the 
tops of the bottles and the straws and the you know silverware plastic silverware and all those kind of things and little you know piece of plastic that you use to cover your food and plastic bags it's just thousands of pieces per person a year so if other people see that you're doing something your friends see it your family see it in social media they're going to say okay you know i can also do this can we pass to the next slide also i want to announce to you that we have in our website a section about faith related resources which we have curated for all different faiths and there's lots of other interesting information that you can use either to use in your uh, you know if there's anybody that runs a house of worship in the in the line you know what do you do in your house of worship how you incorporate this in conversations that we have with others but also we will be putting up in our website soon a toolkit for faith leaders which is related to plastic pollution and it has three elements you know how you act yourself as a faith leader how you involve your community and what you do from your house or workshop so this is going to be an interesting toolkit we have never developed something like this before and so i'm pretty sure it's going to have lots of mistakes and we would love to have feedback so if you find it and use it please let us know what you think um and, and i think that's that's all i had to say for right now and and just pass it back to Paz, and, and thank you very much, and I hope I didn't take too much time, Paz. No, not at all, Valeria, thank you. Um, in fact, at this time, um, I'm gonna do a couple of things. I'm going to show that last um, slide because there they have your email, uh, as well as information of how to get in touch with you. And just reminding everybody, you will be getting a, a copy of the recording and a copy of the slides. Also to remind you, uh, when Valeria talked about some of these um, items that are available, they are here in your uh, control panel under the section called handouts. Uh, they are available there for you to download. We will also be sending them to you as links, uh, so you will receive those. Uh, at this time, we're going to do a little bit of a switch. Uh, and remember, we'll have the question and answer period after this. Uh, so if you do have questions, please uh, type them in the question box. Uh, at this point, we're going to concentrate a little bit on unpacking the Covenants Earth Day program. Uh, many of you have gotten an email saying that it is ready for download. Uh, I have a picture there of what it looks like. Uh, the program itself is called Beyond a Throwaway Culture, Reduce Waste, Grow Community. Uh, it's a one-hour educational program, and it has the focus on addressing both individually and collectively, and that's important, the growing problem of single-use plastic especially. Uh, and the reason we say it's important because uh, we have tips and handouts in it of how people can act on this individually but more importantly, how your community, your faith community can work on this issue collectively. The program will inc include prayers, readings, action ideas, and a short video. So who is supposed to this, uh, use this program? Uh, the program is focusing on parishes, schools, youth groups, universities, religious communities, uh, or any group that is interested in exploring how we as Catholics uh, can work on go, uh, moving beyond the throwaway culture. Uh, the outcome, uh, we hope that by the end of the hour, uh, the group will commit to using less disposable plastic and commit to participating in both individual and community activities to reduce single-use plastic. The program includes handout and uh, tips and ideas and actions uh, for this collective action. Uh, it also includes ideas of how you yourself can do things uh, to use less plastic. Uh, though it is very important that as individuals we do things, uh, as Catholics, uh, we also want to work collectively. We want to work as a Catholic community. And that is why the program also includes a grow community section of how do we work together uh, to both 
uh, reuse, refuse, reduce, all of it together, recycle. Uh, you will see in the program uh, ideas, but we also let each community make up their mind as to what their interest and passion is uh, and come up with a project that will be running between Earth Day and the season of creation, which is September 1st through October 4th. So we ask folks to brainstorm their ideas, to commit to doing this during those next four months, and then re to sign up with us uh, what your project is, and then report back between Earth Day and the season of creation, so that during the season of creation, the Covenant can, through social media, uh, do a big promotion about what the U.S. Catholic community is doing on plastic use reduction. And then on the Feast of St. Francis, we will have a big uh, announcement and everybody that has participated will get a certificate. Uh, just to give you a couple of ideas of what's already happening uh, within the Catholic community. Uh, so these are two ex very interesting projects that are in the works or have happened. Uh, St. Columkill in Papillon, Nebraska, they had a give up plastic for Lent challenge last year. Over 300 members of their parish participated. Uh, this is an interesting uh, concept that in the UK, uh, the Church of England has taken on. And for this year, they did push a uh, Lent free, pla um, Lent pla a plastic free Lent, I'm sorry, uh, program. Uh, St. Columkill also during the holidays between Christmas and New Year did a styrofoam collection and recycling project. Uh, they worked in conjunction with a Plastilite company collecting styrofoam. Uh, Plastilite turned styrofoam into surfboards, coolers, screwdrivers. So all the styrofoam from the gift, the, the boxing that came in the packaging, uh, they worked with uh, parishes in the area um, around Omaha. And astonishingly, they were able to collect over 2,400 cubic feet of styrofoam. And to give you an idea of how much that is, uh, you could imagine a pool um, about 20, 12 by 40 and five feet deep, or imagine a room that's 18 by 17 in, uh, feet and eight foot ceilings. Another project uh, is Dignity Health. Uh, San Francisco-based Dignity Health owns and operates uh, about 24 Catholic hospitals, uh, primarily in California, Nevada, and Arizona. They were inspired by a local Girl Scout who spoke, uh, had seen an ad for Dignity Health and had seen a picture in the ad of uh, people using a plastic straw. Uh, this Girl Scout had a project going on uh, with ocean plastic cleanup, and she approached the uh, CEO of Dignity Health and talked to him about it. And Dignity Health eliminated plastic straws and stir sticks from all of its cafeterias. Uh, it, this accounts for about 50% of the plastic that was used every day in, that, in the hospital. Now, they're not taking it out from the patient side yet, but they are looking in how to uh, find compostable or biodegradable straws for the patient side. Uh, because of this action, this one Catholic organization has reduced its usage by about 5,500 straws daily, or about, or about, 10, about 2 million per year. Uh, so, that gives you a little bit of an idea of what uh, some Catholics are uh, doing at the moment. At this time, we are going to now take some questions and answer, and we're going to answer them. Uh, I'm looking here uh, for one question. I know Valeria is going to go on, on webcam, so she can uh, be there for you. I'll do that in a couple of minutes. Um, I have one question here. Uh, that plastic is so ingrained in our society, even when we use what's called reusable plastic, such as uh, bins for storage, eventually we know it's going to be dumped. How do we, rather than use less plastic, 
uh, do uh, use plant-based uh, compostable plastic perhaps? Uh, do we go for reusable fabric bags? Um, be, but that's also a question because they'll also end up in a landfill. So how do we start looking at this issue with that bigger picture? Want me to answer this? Yes, please, Valeria. Yes. Okay. So that's why I think what I was saying before is important is like how we reduce our consumption first and think about, do we really need this? Um, if you need to put a lot of things away in the storage, that means probably you don't need them. <laughs> that was what happened to me. I put things in my garage in storage and I never see them again for a year or two until I go back and I look at them and say, why do I even have these things here? Maybe I have to donate them to somebody that can use them. So I think reducing, in my opinion, is the most important step. And then, yes, you know, there is things in which you're not going to be able to eliminate entirely the use of something, but you have choices. So, for example, instead of water bottles, you don't need to buy a plastic water bottle, but you can use maybe a glass water bottle or a metallic water bottle because those can be fully recycled. They are fully recycled. You know, glass can be recyclable and metals even better because those are entirely recyclable. So I think it's important for us to do this one by one. This is not a blanket analysis of plastics. You have to go through what do you use. So, for example, I don't use the straws at all. So that's not a problem for me. Uh, I don't use plastic bottles because I use a cup or a glass in the office. I have one in my desk and I have a bottle that I carry with me. For me, the problem is um, covering my food in the refrigerator for, with something. So I've been looking at what else can I use? I, I think any of these things are require a little bit of research and thinking. And that is why this uh, primer that we have created at least will put you in the right direction. We cannot recommend a product, but if you think enough about it, you will be able to find a much better solution than what you're using today, which eventually will end up in the landfill as a, as a, as a plastic that cannot be recycled because most of the plastic is not recycled. Excellent, thank you. Um, I've got a question here about what kind of legislation is being proposed at Congress to reduce plastic pollution. And what about at the international level? I'll say something and then I'll pass it on to Valeria. Yeah. Uh, in the US Congress, uh, there is probably not much being proposed on plastic at the moment, but I do know that at the international level, uh, this issue is much, much bigger. Uh, in fact, our video that we did use is from the European Environmental Bureau, uh, because the European Union is really taking a big uh, lead on this issue. And perhaps, Valeria, you want to talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I, there are several levels of legislation that you can have. I think the one that's being talked about right now a lot is an international treaty, maybe to be signed in the future, to deal with the pollution in the oceans by plastic. Right. Because a big chunk of the ocean does not belong to anyone. And when something doesn't belong to anyone, generally is not taken care of by anyone. And so that's why we have this enormous concentration of plastics in the, in the middle of the ocean. And we need to start stopping that. But then there is national legislation, like in the US or in any country. And I think that what has been done in the US is, for example, beads, plastic beads, which are those micro, micro, little round plastic things that they put in a lot of cosmetics can be banned in the US. So you will not find them anymore in your cosmetics, but they are being used in a lot of other countries. So we need to stop that because that goes into the water systems. And you cannot get rid of it once it gets into the water system. There's a lot of bans being created by cities for plastic bags, or they are taxing plastic bags, or they are taxing plastic bottles. This is a one item per item issue because there's a lot of lobby from companies. You know, there is people once their individual choice, they want to be able to buy whatever they want. It's not so easy to pass legislation. I think this legislation is going to start coming up more in the radar of legislators because people are going to demand it. So, for example, if you care about some of these things and you write to your congressman, to your senator and say, why you're not doing anything about this? You've seen all these studies that came just last week about the amount of fiber plastics in all the water, in your tap water, in your bottled water. What are gonna have to, we're gonna have to start filtering our own water at home because once they are in the water, you can't get rid of those things. I mean, they are not so easy to get rid of. 
And there's lots of connections with health. So one of the tips that I can tell you for sure is please do not use any plastic container to heat your food in the microwave. Even if it says that it's microwave safe and it has, doesn't have this, doesn't have that, most plastic will have some kind of chemical component that will leach into your food if you heat it in the microwave. You can use safe containers to storage food, but do not heat it. That, for example, is one thing that all of us can do. But legislation is going to be a up, upheaval process, I can tell you. It would only happen as the citizens organize and start demanding some action. Right, and that is why uh, this collect um, community action at the local level is so important. Uh, if your city or your county is in need of doing a uh, plastic bag ban uh, of uh, recycling, uh, that's where that action can really work. Uh, at the U.S. Congress level, uh, it's going to be harder in the next uh, few months. Maybe it'll get better. Uh, but yes, do connect with your um, member of Congress and push this issue, uh, especially if uh, internationally they are also seeing a movement on this. Thank yeah. you, Valeria. This question gets a little bit into the weeds. Uh, what are the statistics about how much plastic pollution is produced per individual in the U.S. or how much plastic pollution the United States produces in total? And then the question also says, is there a way to compare uh, if developed countries produce more plastic than um, rich countries? Um, I cannot give you, uh, you know, precise numbers over the presentation right now, but I can certainly share with Paz a number of studies. There was one study about waste all over the world where you can go see how much is produced in every country. One thing that I can tell you is that what we know for sure is, you know, how much goes into the landfills. What we don't know for sure exactly is, you know, how much ends up outside of the landfills, which are really the big problem is. But there is a, a list of the countries, for example, that mismanaged plastic waste and so we know that those countries possibly are the source of the most of the plastic in the ocean and the united states is number 20th and the top is one is china china indonesia the philippines vietnam sri lanka and thailand so you may see that the top eight producers of plastic going to the ocean are all in asia you know it's, it, and this is related directly to waste management you know, right. if the cities have good waste management, a lot of the plastic is dealt with somehow. Even if it is not recycled, goes into the landfill and is not in the rest of the environment. But when you don't have good waste management, then this becomes a enormous problem. And so we are pushing in Earth Day for a number of things. You know, for individuals to reduce consumption because if even if we are responsible people with an increase of 400 percent of production of plastics until 2050. Can you imagine? We can only even manage the plastic that we have today in the world. Put 300 times more of that, and you'll see how this is gonna look like. The second thing is governments have to do more. Not every government is delinquent, but even in the US, you know, we think that everything is very similar. If you go to Alaska, it's a big challenge. In communities that are isolated, they don't have any waste management systems. They are very similar to what you will be doing in a small town in Africa. You know, they just collect it in a hole in the backyard and put it there. So we need to increase our capacity for managing waste, including plastics. Yeah. And here, I don't think it's a question, but it's one that I have. Uh, with China closing its market to recycle uh, things, how does that impact uh, U.S. recycling? I think what is happening with the industry in general is that they are having some challenges because there's two or three things happening. One is that producing plastic is cost less now because they're coming up with thinner and thinner plastic containers. Have you seen the bottles now? You can squish them and they kind of collapse. Well, it's cheaper to produce one of those bottles that actually buy the recycled plastic to do a new bottle. So they are having a big challenge right now, the industry, they are losing money. And so this is going to be a moment in which people are going to start investing in new materials. So somebody was saying, you know, compostable or recyclable or decompostable materials. There's not that many of that right now. So we're going to see a lot of transformation and innovation in the next five years because it's going to be driven by this, this challenge that now you can just not pack your things and send them to China. China will say, 
no more plastic, that's it, we're not buying anymore. So it's gonna be absorbed maybe by other countries in Asia, but it's not gonna be able to be absorbed in the amount that China used to. So right now is a moment of transformation in the plastic industry. We're gonna see some interesting things happening and maybe we'll see materials that do not come from oil, or maybe they come from oil and they are fully recyclable. So it's, it's you know, we have to see and, and watch what happens, but um, it's going to be a lot of transformation in the industry, I can tell you that. Uh, getting a few questions from folks that uh, would like to have the copies of the plastic poster from the UK that was on before and directions for making plastic mats for the homeless. Um, if you email me at paz, P-A-Z, at catholicclimatecovenant.org, I can get you those links and that information. Uh, the next question is, um, why is it that you can't microwave uh, in plastic? Uh, they want to repeat about okay. that. Okay, because if you microwave a piece of plastic, it heats up, and then part of the plastic itself leaches into the food. It evaporates a little bit, you know, it, it just warms out because of the heat and then passes into the food. And some of the components in plastic are chemicals that you do not want to eat along with your food because they have all kinds of bad consequences for you. You know, there is, there is not a lot of studies because apparently has not been a lot of investment into this area, which is something that we are also asking for, but there is enough connections because of studies have been done that proved the relation of plastics with cancer, with diabetes, with obesity, in a lot of changes in hormonal works in your body, either by reducing the number of hormones that you create in your body or increasing them. And you have heard, you know, about little kids developing faster these days. Well, that's part of the of this problem with um, hormonal disruptors, and some of them are in plastic. I, I will uh, please direct you again to the primer in plastic pollution that we have created. There is lots of resources and information there. And this is this kind of thing that is better be prevent these things instead of being sorry. I will absolutely tell you, please use, you know, glass or some something else to heat up your food. Do not heat it up in plastic. There is a very big consensus right now about that's not good for you. Right. Um, with a question about uh, washing uh, things like glass and uh, having uh, not using plastic, but having uh, non disposables. Uh, how does dishwashing or hand washing compare to using plastic in the use of resources? Uh, the question is couched with in the old days, they used to say that we use too much water if we were going to be washing. Uh, so now plastic is the problem. Uh, how do we weigh those two uh, issues? I mean, both, both things are a problem, right? If, if we were to be managing all our plastics well, and they all end up in a landfill, it is a problem, but it's not such, such a big problem. The landfill is well managed, you know, and everything is fine. It stays there, it does not leach into the water system, it's okay. The problem is that an enormous amount of plastic is thrown away. You just have to go up the streets in any city, you know, in your town. Even uh, cigarette butts have plastic on them. There are billions of them thrown. They go into the gutter, they go into the water. So you have to stop that somehow. Um, I will say there is methodologies. For example, I put, um, I, and I ask this myself all the time because my husband is a very uh, strict about, you know, what is the energy consumption related to this choice or that choice? It is not so easy. I wish I there have, you know, a little calculator that we can say how much carbon and energy is used by this, by this, and by that. What I try to use is, um, put a thing in the bottom of my sink, you know, and I fill it with some water and wash all the things in that water and then clean them up all at once. So how there's certain practices that you can do to reduce the use of water. I, I can't tell you, you know, definitively which one is better, but certainly uh, plastic has an enormous number of effects that are not good. It affects the environment, the health, animals, 
and your food chain and eventually directly you know what you're consuming maybe just covered with plastic once plastic gets into the environment you can't get it out unless you go pick it up yeah isn't there that message that every piece of plastic that has ever been produced is still basically with us in some form or another yeah uh, unless you unless you burn it and then it produces all this that, but it's still the, the byproduct water. is still with us yeah exactly so uh, it's, yeah, yeah. Here's There's a nothing great perfect. question. There's nothing perfect. There's a trade-off for everything. So one has to try to diminish the trade-offs, let's say. Right. Here's a question. Um, do the toolkits that Earth Day Network has produced have anything on teaching children in schools about reducing, reusing, and recycling? Yes, yes. In fact, there is another toolkit that is not listed in the PowerPoint presentation, but in the handouts that you put there. We created a whole week of curriculum for every class from K to 12 that you can download from our website. It gives exercises and content for kids of different ages. Yes. And it's completely free uh, to download and to use. And we also connect in the Catholic Climate Covenants program to, you, uh, to your network and to your website so people can go back and forth. Uh, is there a biodegradable replacement for plastic bags uh, or is it being developed, developed and marketed? Um, I know that I read the other day that they were looking at some biodegradable replacements, uh, but personally, I'm always looking at either not using the plastic bags when I at all um, and using reusable containers as much as possible. Yeah, they, they are, you know, like in plastic bags, there's like three categories in my opinion. I'm kind of an organized person. I'm stickler with, you know, what to do with this and to do with that. Uh, when you go to the supermarket, generally these plastic bags to put your products in, you put them in the cart and then you take them to the counter, right? I carry my own little bags that are rewashable. So they're in the internet, a ton of them, you know, there are some made out of plastic, but they're mesh and you can wash them again and again and again. And they last for a long time. Mine, Right now are six years old and they are perfect we also send thin cloth bags that you can put your products with then you can carry your own shopping bags which if you buy good ones they last a long long time yes eventually they will end up in the landfill but you know but, the, but then you are saving i don't know how many hundreds of shopping bags and i also have different cloth bigger cloth bags when i go shopping other things and so i think that you can almost eliminate um, single-use plastic bags from your from your shopping life if you just you know find a little bit of um, a few alternatives uh, they may be a little bit of an expense at the beginning but then you use them for a long 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 time this next question um, goes to sometimes how hard it is uh, to reduce uh, the use of plastic containers and food products uh, such as yogurt and uh, things that are hard, you know, you can't go to the supermarket and take yeah. the yogurt from a container and reuse it. Uh, I know that I do certain things like when we go to the restaurant, I bring my own uh, container to bring home rather than take one yeah. of theirs. Uh, there's also people that live zero waste lives that are incredibly efficient as to how they decide what to buy and how to buy it. Uh, but for those of us who are the normal consumer, uh, how do we take action? How can we do this? Um, where should, what should be the first thing we do when we reduce? Yeah, what I will say is that if you go through this little, you know, plastic calculator that we talk, it's just a list of plastic that you can think about item by item. Let's start with the low hanging fruit. So what are the things that you think would be the easiest for you to give up? So for me it was straws. Very easy. I don't need any straw for drinking anything. So I can immediately, I don't buy them, you know, I don't accept them, period. Yeah. Second one was water, bottled water. I have one bottle in my car, I carry one in my purse. You know, we filter water at home, we have a machine to put glass on it if we want it. We use all glass bottles to storage water. So we don't, I don't use bags. I think other things may be more difficult. And then you have to then do more research and say, okay, what else can I use? 
and and I think you know it requires a little bit of thinking about it and creating a method. So you were saying about your container that you take to restaurants or to take out food. Or to the, I put a container and a set of silverware in my backpack that I carry everywhere. So I never forget because it now lives in my backpack. I wash it, put it in there, carry it with me. And so I don't say, oh my gosh, you know, I forgot my container. And a lot of the supermarkets now are allowing you to go to the counter where they wait, for example, meat or fish or whatever, and take your own container. They wait at first and they take it out of the calculation so you don't have to use a container. Or try to buy, for the most part, fresh products instead of things that are wrapped up already in a, in a plastic. I know that this is challenging. You know, I'm not saying that this is easy, believe me. I, I have gone through all the videos about people living without any plastic. That is not an easy thing to do. You have to really have a high level of commitment. So I will say, start with the low hanging fruit and then keep adding one or two new items every month. Don't try to tackle everything at the same time because you will drop it in a week and say, this is impossible. You know, little by little, maybe in a year, you will see that you have reduced 60 or 70% of your plastic consumption. You'll be surprised. How, and you can track it because this thing is created with a tracker. So you can say, hey, I used to consume this much. How much am I consuming now? It's kind of a fun exercise. You can do it with all your family members, create a little competition, you know. Who's consuming less? Uh, you can do it in your office. This, this is about us um, setting up a goal. If you don't have a goal, you're not going to achieve it. But I would say do it in stages. And you'll see in six months, you'll be surprised. And this is exactly what we're asking folks to do during Earth Day to Season of Creation, to look at how as a community you can do these things. Uh, set a goal. Uh, we're going to say no to the straw for four months. Uh, tell us how many straws you think you may have been able to divert from the landfill. Uh, start small. Put in the bulletin insert every Sunday at church a little tip about what people can do. Anything that you know Valeria was talking about that's in these toolkits and in these handouts, that's the kind of education that we can start doing. Uh, so that's the education piece. This next question, and I think it may be our last one, uh, it switches to um, corporate responsibility. Uh, are there any strategies that we can use to approach the plastic producing industry to get them to be more socially responsible? Um, in Europe already, there's been a lot of less plastic manufacturing and they're looking at alternatives. Uh, so the plastic industry is getting ahead of the game there. Uh, how can we approach that here in the United States? No, I think one thing that is interesting about Europe is the majority of the countries in Europe have a policy in which the companies that produce the plastics that eventually are going to end in the landfill have to pay a tax. So the polluter pays. That does not exist in the U.S., unfortunately. So the companies pass the cost of processing the waste to the individuals, us, because we pay the taxes, and to the cities that have to you know, run the landfills. So I think that what is happening is that a lot of companies care about sustainability. If you are particularly interested in one type of plastic pollution, you can go see if that company has a report on sustainability. And as part of that report, there will be something about plastics. And then you can read about it. And there's lots of campaigns that have been created by different types of people that you can join. So there is move.org, there is Avas, there is change.org. All create campaigns that you can join and they have different objectives. I think companies are now much more than ever in the U.S. Um, looking at what people and their clients and the people that consume from us think about them. So you can write in their social media, you can write letters to them uh, or join something more organized. In the toolkit, in every section, we have also something about other organizations and what they are doing. So we have listed a, lot, a, a number of organizations working with plastics and that some of them, they're directly focused on companies. So please just visit that and you're gonna find them. And there's very interesting other organizations that you can just join whatever they are doing. You know, we are not on Earth Day, our idea is we bring you into the subject and here's a host of other groups that you can join and help. And there's very specialized ones, and we do not we do not work that in particular. Our job is to introduce people to the subject and educate. 
then get people to do individual actions. There are others working with, with corporations. But I can send you, Paz, if you're interested, maybe a, a one pager with resources about you know how to engage with companies, and, and you can probably you know disseminate it to others. Yes, uh, the Earth Day page is going to have a sec a separate web page soon with resources listed so people can yeah. come to that and all these things will be up there. Uh, you mentioned an app or tracker that helps keep track of the changes. Do you have a name of it, uh, Valeria? It is, it is all in the, in the primer. Uh, we call the first, you know, the calculator. Then we have a little thing that is called a plan, which is another set of charts in which you can just pass the numbers of your consumption and track it. So the plan and the tracker is just one set of charts that are at the very end of the uh, primer. And we have also a, um, a standing alone thing with the calculator, the primer. I can send you also that and you can share it. So it's like yeah. about six pages out of the primer that we pull aside so people can just find the calculator on his own. I can send you that. Sure, I can send that out with the recording. Okay. Let me take uh, notes of this so I don't forget. <laughs> very good point made here by uh, a sister. Uh, a lot of uh, Catholic uh, organizations, institutions, uh, religious groups uh, own stock in company. So there's a lot of shareholder resolution possibilities as well. Something to remember. Uh, yep. I think at this point we're going to close the Q and A. I will go through the questions, and if there's one that we missed and that needs an answer, I will do it personally. Uh, Valeria, I want to extend to you my um, biggest thank you for joining us today. Uh, you were fantastic. Uh, everybody, please remember that the a lot of what we talked about is within the. Earth Day program from the Covenant, as well as these uh, handouts that Valeria has put up here in the, and I will also be sending the links to everybody. Uh, do not forget that when we are done, there is a survey that we ask you to take. Uh, it's very short. Uh, and at this point, if you have any questions, you can send a, an email to info at catholicclimatecovenant.org or you can send it to paz at catholicclimatecovenant.org, P-A-Z. Uh, I want to thank everybody also who joined us today. Uh, let me know if we need to get you some more information. Thank you, Valeria. Thank you, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you, thank you to all. Thank you, Paz. Bye-bye.